Hello, today I'll be doing an install of Foreman 1.1. I'll be using the Foreman installer and following the quick start guide on the Foreman website. So I'll start by installing the Foreman release package to give us access to the repos. I'm doing this on a RHEL 6.4 box. If you're using RHEL, make sure you have EPAL and the optional child channel enabled, and preferably version 6. Uh, we also support Fedora, uh, the latest uh, Debian stable, ensure you've got an updated version of Puppet though, and the latest Ubuntu LTS release. I'll now install the Foreman installer package. This is going to pull down a number of Puppet modules for us that we'll use to install Foreman. These will get installed under user share Foreman installer. Once it's finished. So user share Foreman installer, and we have Foreman itself, Foreman smart proxy, Apache, and other dependencies. We have a script that generates an answers file for us and then can run Puppet using these modules to configure Foreman. So we'll paste that and run this. Now we'll be doing an all-in-one setup with Foreman, the proxy and a Puppet Master all installed on the same VM. I'm going to say no here so we can have a look at the other options. If I select 2 to change the proxy options, we can also enable DHCP or DNS management through here. I'm going to leave these at the defaults and show the current configuration. This is our answers file. It defines that we'll be installing the Puppet Master, the Foreman Smart Proxy, Foreman and Puppet. So let's save and exit now and then we'll say yes so that the modules are run and Foreman gets configured. This will take a little while as it's got a number of packages to install and then it will lay down the configuration files needed to integrate Foreman with Puppet. Now that the installer's finished its job, we'll be able to view the Foreman interface The service listens on HTTP and HTTPS, and the HTTPS service will be using the Puppet self-signed certificates to begin with. So let's add an exception for these. The initial username and password is admin and change me, one word. and we're given the welcome page for the Foreman interface. Now the installer installed a smart proxy for us, so we'll begin by adding this. Smart proxies are normally used to manage the uh, DNS, DHCP and Puppet services remotely. So if you have a separate Foreman and Puppet Master service, they communicate using smart proxies. In this case everything is all on the same box, but we need to add it anyway. So we create a new one. I'll give this one the name Quick Start. It is an HTTPS URL with the FQDN and the port 8443. Now Foreman scans this for the features it understands and is configured for. In this instance it's supporting Puppet the Puppet Certificate Authority and the TFTP server. Now let's go back to the Foreman host and I'm going to run Puppet on here. So it's Puppet Agent dash dash test for one time only. This will be configured to point at the local Puppet Master server and the Puppet Master is configured to point at the local Foreman server. The first warning we get here with Puppet 3 is safe to ignore. It's doing a plug and sync, and initially there won't be any configuration applied to the system. 
so no change. Going back to the Foreman UI, if we click on Hosts, we'll now see the Quick Start host listed here. So we see it checked in less than a minute ago. It's running RHEL 6.4, and there was no change. Now I'm going to begin by installing a new module on the Puppet Master server. So I'm going to go to the Puppet Labs Forge. and find a module to manage my NTP daemon. So we'll take this command, we'll change to the Puppet Modules directory, now this is stored on the Puppet Master. Now I'm going to install this one in the common area. The installer sets this up with a production area, development area, and a common one that's available in, available in both. Now we'll go back to the Foreman interface and we're going to import this new module that we've installed. So to the More menu, Configuration, and Puppet Classes. So we'll import this from our Puppet Master. We see it's found the NTP module in both the development and the production environments. When I click update, the Foreman proxy is going to scan through the modules we're adding. It will parse all of the classes and parameters that are defined inside the module and it will add them into the Foreman interface. So we see it found an NTP module and it has 23 different parameters. So I'm going to set one of these parameters to give it the name of my NTP server. So we'll click on Smart Class Parameters. Down here we have Server List. Now Foreman is showing us the value inside the manifests. We're going to change this. I'm going to replace all of that with my NTP server. There's more information about the smart class parameters, different ways to override them, in another screencast available on the former.org website. Now we're going to apply the NTP class to our host. We'll go back to the host screen, back to our quick start host. We can see information about the host here, but we're going to edit it now. On the Puppet Class tab, we expand the module and we add the NTP class. Now we've saved this, that class can now be applied. We'll see this in the YAML output. This is the information given to Puppet when a node checks in and we'll see that it's going to apply the NTP class with this is my NTP server. So now we'll test this, going back to the host and rerunning Puppet. We can see that Puppet's making a series of changes here and once it completes Foreman will receive a report on the changes made in the Puppet Run. So if we go back to our host, we click on the Reports button, we'll see we have a new report here less than a minute ago. We can see the same series of changes that we saw in the console output, and we can also view the diffs from within the UI. So we can see the change that was made here to my ntp.conf and the server that was added. The dashboard page is now up to date, showing that changes were made. It also gives you access to reports on your infrastructure, facts, auditing and so on. Going beyond this, the manual 
on the foreman.org website is very extensive and goes into detail about integration with other systems and provisioning. We also have an IRC channel and a Google Groups mailing list if you get stuck or need help. We hope you enjoy using the foreman.